Can we come up with a different word for mental health? Because I... I just call it mental, emotional, no, spiritual, physical. No, I think it needs to be mm-hmm. body-focused. Mm-hmm. Because, right. again, when I see... Because it's a nervous system health is what Yes. It is. And because when I hear mental health, I think about thoughts. And I think about, like, mm-hmm. everything going from the neck up, upstairs. But when, it's really your emotional... That's what happens ...nervous first. system that needs to heal. You feel but, something first. Your mm-hmm. body feels it first. So... Before you even, if you're going through dating issues, before you even start to wrestle with thoughts, you feel uncomfortable about whether you should. Text. And then you start analyzing it. Yes, you start yeah. stacking these thoughts. And you start worrying and stressing. In and then it amplifies here, but it begins Man, here. This is why. You know, this I... is where the red flags are, everybody. You feel discomfort here. Man, it's not a match. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how much negotiating you do with yourself up here. There is no perfect time to mm-hmm. send a text. Hey, what are you doing? Exactly. And when you're stressing about that, that's that's something you got to work on for yourself. It's not about the other person. It's mm-hmm. about you. Why am I stressing? This is why I just I was telling you about this. Where I went through a seven day uh, advanced meditation retreat with Dr. Joe Dispenza, and he talks about how man we've really got to heal all these different things with our thinking and with our body. And it takes practice. You know, this is a practice thing that you've got to learn how to optimize. And it's it's really creating an intentional thought and then an elevated emotion so you can attract what you want. But if you're thinking scarce thinking and stressed out thoughts, you're going to be more needy and reactive. Oh, so is he basically using the science of like trauma in a positive way? Yes. So when you have an elevated emotion, mm-hmm. it, it fires up your nervous system. And, and so like, then the yeah. thought mm-hmm. gets married well, to that emotion. It's, what's the intentional thought that you want? I want a healthy relationship. So seeing that, so putting focus on a healthy relationship in your mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. Okay, what does that feel like? It feels peaceful. It feels joyful. I can be myself. I feel we have fun. We play, you know. Uh, when I communicate, they communicate back directly in a conscious way. Man, that feels really good. Okay, let's go create from that space as opposed to I feel anxious and tired and I'm alone and I feel like no one loves me. Can someone please love me? You know, so it's thinking like and, then, and, then you're feeling, and then you're feeling stressed and you're creating from that space yeah. of, of lack, less than loneliness and fear of someone loving you. And all my friends are all in relationships, but I'm not. something wrong with me. I should go... And then I'm anxious as opposed to, no, I'm going to be cautious about my thinking about what it is I want in a relationship and then feel the feeling and create from that space. Mm-hmm. And really focus on, and he talks, you know, he does a lot of the meditation practices to heal the nervous system, mm-hmm. to go into the quantum field so yeah. you can heal the nervous system. Yeah. And I think that's, I wish I knew this stuff earlier, but. Um, can I go back to something about the dating? Because you asked it. me, what like do I do? Yes. So I've made I made some major mistakes, mm-hmm. and I want to. When you were dating? No, no, no. With 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 your kids? Yeah. Okay. Um, I did some. Chris and I did some incredible things. Like I think one of the things we got right, very right, is how we handled the discussion around sex. That's good. Because yes. most people never talk about it. Oh, parents. we we do it in a complete Jedi mind trick way. So when our kids were young, daughters in particular, like 12, 13. Yeah, yeah. sat them down and said, "Listen." Sex is amazing. Uh-huh. It is one of the most incredible things about your adult life. Wow. It is so incredible that you do not want to waste that experience of the first time you experience sex with some loser in the back of a car. Like right. this is actually something that deserves respect and you want to have that experience with somebody that you love and here's and we want to make sure you're safe and that you or with a partner so you can enjoy it. Because a lot of times the first experience, and they're, and your kids are like this. Uh-huh. Wait, are you telling me to have sex? What's happening here? And I say, so here's what we're going to do. When you think you love somebody and you have found the person you would like to have your first sexual experience with, come to dad and I. Mm, that's good. And we will get your protection. And here's what else we're going to do. We're going to uh, leave the house. Wow. So you can have <laughs> the house... To yourself. Wow. You can be That's in your crazy. room. Why is it crazy? No, it's amazing you guys did that. You can be in your room. You can play music. You can be in a safe space. And you can take your time. Like, we won't ask any details. Wow, that's amazing. But we'll leave for the, you know, we'll leave for many hours and then we'll come home. And 
what was fascinating is uh, like our kids gave us that look like, <laughs> and then they came to us. Uh-huh. And what they came, they came and, what in 13, 14? No, no, no <laughs> like uh, I think like sophomore year, maybe yeah, yeah, at yeah. a sophomore year. And what was amazing about it is that when you have your conversation match the reality, which mm. is sex is amazing. Because they're going to do it anyways at some point. And do you, you want well... them talking to their dick friends about no, it? Who have no clue about it. And this also gives you a chance, mm. by the way, to be there as an adult to then go, oh, because when they come to you, you're like, I'm not ready for this. But you don't say that. You say, okay, well, why do you think you're ready? And tell me how this person makes you feel. Wow. And you know, uh, hopefully you, and we, of course, they had been in a relationship for a year or so. So we knew the person and we, and so that was absolutely incredible because that is exactly what happened. And we got them protection and and we left the house and they felt supported. And the other thing that. Because otherwise they would do it behind your back anyways. If they didn't tell you about it, they'd go do it in the back of a car and hide it from you. And then feel shame. And hide Instead of feeling empowered. And for mm-hmm. for girls in particular, there is not a loud enough conversation about pleasure in sex and empowerment in sex and being in the driver's seat around it. And so there's too much shame and secrecy around it, which is why it becomes a mental health issue. And so the other thing that I think was interesting too is, you know, and in that same conversation, we we're like, and look, you're going to get a lot of pressure mm-hmm. as you are fooling around with people to go down on them. I want you to stop and think about something. Are they going down on you? Mm. Mom! Well, I'm serious. This right. isn't just about them, guys. Like, why are you so quick to do that to them? Right. You're trying to prove something? Like, isn't, shouldn't it be reciprocal? Sure. Haven't you thought about the fact that your needs are important? And that you should be with somebody that really is is concerned about your needs too. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about a mind because because it gets them to stop and consider. Wait, I have power in this because from a very young age, from a gender traditional heterosexual gender perspective, what happens at a junior high dance? Who asks who to dance? The guy asks the girl. Correct. Yeah. So the girls are trained to wait. To wait. And to be chosen. And then you notice who gets picked and who doesn't. Right. And so from a very young age, we are socialized to believe that we are supposed to be picked. Which is where so much of the preening and the sexualization Mm -hmm. comes from. And so as a mom, I have been trying in subtle ways and not so subtle ways (laughs) to get my daughters to go, well, why are they picking? Mm -hmm. Stop, like, you know, I get that it's it sucks that you go to a bar and all the guys approach your friends, but why are you, why are you waiting to get picked? Sure. Like, can we change the conversation about this? Can mm-hmm. you think differently about this? Like, don't you have so much cool shit going on? Right. Why would you leave it up to some random dude approaching you? I know. But, and then finally, one mm-hmm. more thing. Never tell them all that stuff when they're in distress. All right. So when they call you and they're like freaking out because some guy they've been hooking up with now is hooking up with somebody else or they're not texting back Mm -hmm. or they're sad about this or they're worried about that, just say this. This changed my parenting. I know I've shared it with you before. Do you want me to listen or would you like some advice? Mm -hmm. And they always say, I want you to listen. And the other question that I always just ask as I'm listening and I'm going, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Well, how did that make you feel? How did that make you feel? Is that how you want to feel? How would it be, like, what would you have wanted this person to do Mm -hmm. to get them to start to vocalize how it's actually impacting them? Yeah. Because if you tell them, I don't like that person or I don't like what you're doing, now what you're doing is you're creating this triangle and they'll choose the romantic partner. Right. So if you want to make an impact, it's this tricky dance of knowing that they're in a red flag situation or a mismatch that's not great for their mental health. But you got to find ways to just listen and validate 
to keep them close. Yeah. Why do you think 99% of people stay single that are single? Wait, what? Why do you think the people that are single stay single? Why do you think that's hard for them to get into a healthy, conscious relationship? Why do you think they're staying single longer and it's hard for them to enter a relationship? Oh, I think it's probably because there's stuff about themselves that they can't stand or are insecure about and they're trying to solve it with a relationship. Like mm. a relationship's not a band-aid for the things you don't like about yourself. A relationship just amplifies. It either amplifies insecurity or amplifies more of the good stuff. Right. And so if you're chronically single, and look, I don't know that this is true, but my guess is there's probably something that you've been unwilling to look at and you believe that a relationship is going to solve it. What's going to solve the problem? Yeah. What, what will solve the problem instead of the relationship? Um, I, I think like doing all the work to yeah. just face the stuff that you're avoiding or that you feel pain about. And look, I, I, you know, one of my best friends in the whole world is like the greatest person. I just adore her. And she's been single for a long time and has not met anybody. And it makes me really, really sad. And because she's sad about it because she's lonely. How long has she been single for? Um, well, I mean, she's dated people, but just not found the one. And she's my age. And, you know, I was always wanted to get married. married. No, always wanted to, wanted to have kids, was with the wrong person in her 30s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was with somebody who kept saying, like you said, mismatch. I don't want kids. I don't want to get married. And she kept thinking she could change them. And then all of a sudden 40 hits and just a lot of dating and not finding the right person. Mm. And there's probably something, like you said, there's a long string of things. And even if you've been in therapy, maybe there's something that you haven't really uncovered yet. Mm -hmm. I like to think about life as like this one long road trip. Every year's a mile marker, yeah, right? Yeah. And at every mile marker, you're a freaking different person. So think about all the people you hung out with in high school. They were your ride or die. And then you go and you go through mile marker 18 to 22, you become a different person. And there are some people that are now a mismatch. They're not bad people. Yeah, they're just not as connected as you were in the past. Yes, that's it.